But what I, I thought was really helpful and what I wanted to ask you three about is what she, she said that we can't even talk about the ideal today. And mm -hmm. there, there is a, there is sort of a, I don't know, like a, a collective decision to ignore the ideal. So how, where do you, where do you feel like that might've come from? And is there, when you think about this, how did, how do you think this impacts the topic of motherhood specifically? How, how do we think about motherhood in the fact that we have a culture that doesn't want to aim at something that is the highest example of what we're all trying to get to, even though all of us are going to fall short of that ideal. Yeah. So Michelle, uh, why don't you get started for us? I, I tend to be more idealistic as, as in my personality, but I can really understand. I've got a couple of my kiddos that really struggle with doing a job really well, because that is the ideal to do something to the best. Like if you're going to do anything, do it well, right? There's that quote out there. And I think if you're not, if you feel like you're already going to fail, then why try? Why, why shoot for the ideal? Why go for it? You know? And I wonder if there's that at play in this. And I'm sure it's been, you know, it, it's hard. Like there's probably just been so many generations of this continuing where, well, my mother wasn't present and I think I turned out okay. So, you know, I'll, I'll just keep doing what, you know, I learn and what I experienced. So at some point generationally that happens, like that belief started, you know? And so, I don't know, that's just my thoughts on that. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's really important to point out that sort of the generational kind of conversation around the ideal. Like, like one of the ways to me that, because I, I think what you're describing is an ideal can be a judge and that judgment can create enormous shame and that shame well, can make you want to give up before you even start. And so, well, and we don't really have a good way culturally, at least in the secular world, to deal with the problem of shame without just destroying the ideal. That, that is our strategy in a secular world for overcoming shame. In the gospel, we have a different way of, of doing that. I think one, one of the ways to, to think about the ideal, though, that makes it less of a burden and, and, and of a judge is to think about this from a generational perspective. And that is that if we knew what the ideal was, and let's say I knew in my generation, we're not going to get there. What do I aim at now? If I know I'm going to fail and mm -hmm. the, the ideal, which I think we all are going to fail the ideal. And that's where I think this conversation has to start. And I think one thing that you can aim at that I think is really appropriate is that you want to get closer to the ideal in your generation than your mother or your father did in his or her generation. And so to me, knowing the ideal gives me both the freedom to know that I, I can go upstream from, from, from here, but that I don't have to do it all in one generation. And then I can even train my kids and say, look, I, you know, as a mother, I wasn't able to do this for you, but I wish I could have. I couldn't because of these reasons, but I was able to do more than my mother did for me. And I, I am praying for you and I, I am trying to provide a pathway for you to be able to do more than what I did for you. I mean, that, that's a different way to think about this. And part of what we are trying to do is think about how to build multi-generational families, which I think gives us the freedom to do that. 